Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about reverse engineering the file CrackMe 0x05 using Ghidra. For this demonstration, I'll be using one installation of VirtualBox with the extension pack, one virtual install of the latest version of CSI Linux, one virtual install of Windows 7 Enterprise, and all my VirtualBox adapters have been set to NAT Network. To begin this demonstration, let's go up here to the Application Launcher. And from the Context menu, let's scroll on down to Malware Analysis and Reverse Engineering. From the Context menu, let's go ahead and launch Ghidra. Once the splash screen has gone away, we are shown the Active Project window. The first thing we'll need to do is to create a new project. So let's go up to File. Let's click on New Project. This is going to be a non-shared project, except the default, and click Next. Here we can choose where to save our work and give our project a user-friendly name. I've labeled my project CrackMe 0x05, but you are free to label your project any way you see fit. Let's go ahead and click Finish, and we now have a project folder up inside of our active project window. We'll next need to download the CrackMe0x05 file from the GitHub repository. To do this, we just go out to the internet, and I will make this link available up inside of the video description. Once we're on the site, scroll on down to come to CrackMe0x05.exe. Go ahead and click on that file. On the next page, you're just going to click Download. Once the file has been downloaded to your CSI virtual machine, you're going to need to import it into Ghidra. To do this, let's go to File, let's go to Import File, and from here you'll see that I have the CrackMe0x05.exe inside of my Downloads directory. All I have to do is just go ahead and highlight it and select File to Import. Once you begin the importation process, you will be given some information about the file. You can go ahead and say OK to that. Once the importation process has completed, Ghidra will pop up a lot more information about what it believes it is you have imported into Ghidra. This is Ghidra's best estimation of how the file was compiled. Let's go ahead and make our screen smaller so we can get to the OK button. Once you have everything you need, just go ahead and click OK. We're now ready to begin the file analysis process using Ghidra. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can double click the file, or you can highlight the file, and click on the green dragon. Let's go ahead and just double click the file. Once the analysis process begins, you will be prompted to continue with the analysis. Go ahead and just click yes. From this window, we have to select what analyzers we want to use for the analysis. Go ahead and scroll on down. You're going to uncheck the box for the PDB Universal Scanner. You're going to scroll on down until you come to the Windows PE86 PropGate External Scanner. Go ahead and check that box. And once you have that done, go ahead and click Analyze. Over here on the right, you can see the analysis taking place. Once the analysis is complete, Ghidra will present the assembly code to you in these four different windows. Over here to the right, we have the decompiler. The process of learning how to reverse engineer a program requires that you do have an understanding of some programming basics. So where do we start as a programmer when we're looking at a program? Well, we start with the main function. The main function serves as the starting point for program execution. It usually controls the program execution by directing the calls to other functions in the program. A program usually stops executing at the end of the main, although it can terminate at other points in the program for a variety of reasons. In our analysis of this executable, we are trying to determine how the program works. Our main function is located in the symbol tree window inside of the exports folder. So let's go ahead and expand. And here we see the main function, and it is called underscore main CRT startup. If we double click this underscore main CRT startup function, you'll notice that over here in the decompile window, we can see how it is coded. The decompile window converts binary instructions into high level C like code. 
and that's what we're seeing over here. Inside the decompile window, if we double click underscore MIG W underscore CRT startup, that's right here, we are brought to the following screen where we can see there is a call to the main function. So far we've seen that there was a call to the main function, and here we see that right here. Now if we double click this, we can have the binary converted again to the original source code so we can see exactly what the main function is now doing. So let's just go ahead and click this right here. At the top of our decompile window, we can see that we take in a command line argument, the password, read it into a buffer, and then we're going to pass this buffer to the underscore check program. To make our jobs easier while we're trying to reverse engineer this program, we can rename some of the variables to make them more user friendly. Let's start up here with the instack underscore FFFFF60. We can go ahead and right click and from the context menu we can select rename variable and we can rename this to something that is more user friendly. In this case I'm going to call this buff underscore size. Say OK to that. I'm also going to rename the local underscore 7c variable to something other than what is currently called. I'm going to call this buff. And now when I find these variables within the program, I can quickly identify them by their user-friendly name. So, so far we have the main function looking at an argument, which is the password, and then passing it on to be analyzed within this program. So let's do another analysis of another variable, underscore check. Down here I have underscore check is now called buff. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And you'll see that we're starting to understand better and better exactly what this program is actually doing. And so that we can make better sense of how this program works, we're going to continue on with renaming some more of these variables. Now this one here can actually be called something other than what it is, but what it really is is a password. So we're going to abbreviate that to PWD. Again, I'm going to rename that variable. And now you'll notice that PWD appears throughout our piece of code here. Let's change the name of the variable associated with size underscore T to LEN. Hit OK. Let's rename local underscore 11 to current character. And we're going to abbreviate that as CUR underscore. C-H-A-R, like so. Hit OK. The variable local underscore 10 can be renamed to IDX for index. Local underscore C can be renamed to SUM. And local underscore 8 can be renamed to next value to add. So let's see how this all starts to come together. The underscore check function takes in a password that the user has entered and starts an infinite loop. The goal of the loop is to iterate through each character in the string and store the next character in the current underscore character variable which is on line 16. This character then gets converted into an integer by the underscore s scan f call on line 17. The sum of all these integers is then stored in the sum variable on line 18. On line 19, the function checks if the value of the sum is equal to 0x10. This is a 16 in decimal, and we can get the decompiler to represent this as a decimal by right clicking on the value in the listing pane and clicking convert to unsigned decimal. Let's see how we do that. So to convert 0x10 to a number, we just right click on it here and we're going to go down to where it says convert and we're going to select unsigned decimal. 
Notice that the 0x10 has now been changed to the number 16. So by reverse engineering the main CRT startup, we were able to determine that its main purpose was to determine the correct threshold for the password. And by examining the different variables within the code, we were able to determine exactly what that password threshold was. We can verify this by bringing up a command prompt and running the program. Let's go ahead and do that. So over here in my other virtual machine, I have a Windows 7 running and I have the program ready to go. So here is the program. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. It wants a password. Now if I type in the wrong password and I hit enter, this is what happens. Password is incorrect. But if I run the program again and this time I use any combination of numbers that add up to 16, it'll let me in. And we're in. In this short presentation, we reversed engineered a simple executable, CrackMe0x05.exe. And by examining the main function of the program, we quickly saw that the main function checks the password for the correct sum. We also saw how we could rename variables to make them easier to find and track inside of the disassembled code. Going forward, we will continue to work with other cracking files to improve upon our reverse engineering skills. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about reverse engineering the crackme0x05.exe file. You got questions, you got concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.